How are you doing today? All right, what a lovely crowd we have here. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me here in the Beaver Kings Booth Club as it is time for the last Meet the Artist of this cruise. Now, you have already been able to enjoy quite a bit of our entertainment, uh, including some of the performers on Music Walk, but of course also on the main stage uh, where we have all these wonderful uh, shows for you. And so this thing, the Meet the Artist, really for you is a way to get to know our entertainers a little bit better and also to find out what's going on behind the scenes. Who are they? And what is it like for them to be a professional musician on board a cruise ship? Well, I have to say it is a true pleasure because I've worked with them before and it's actually, this is my last cruise, so it's also going to be for now the last time to work with them. And they are absolutely amazing. The fact that this room is so full already says how popular they are. Without any further ado, please help me welcome your Billboard Onboard Singers, Will and Jason. What's happening? What's happening? How are you doing today? I'm all right, you know? Packing. It's Packing. Sad. It's a sad day. We're all leaving tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. It's mixed feelings. I can imagine. Well, for you, you just want to stay, right? You don't want to go. Yeah, I don't want to go home to Rochester. We haven't, we haven't been here long enough yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish you could stay a little longer. Yeah, unfortunately, it's the way that the contract was uh, was set up. But uh, I'm sure and confident that you guys are going to be back on board somewhere soon. How about we just do some quick introductions? Tell us where you're from and maybe briefly explain your career path. Okay, I am Will Davis. I am from a uh, town right outside Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, Dolly's hometown. And uh, I grew up on a farm but uh, in a musical family. And uh, they were fantastic and always encouraged me to pursue music. It's been the thing I've been the most passionate about, I think, my whole life. And um, so I went to school for <laughs> vocal performance and barely passed my piano proficiency by the skin of my teeth. And um, then I worked at Dollywood for several years and a couple theaters around the area. And then um, I went to a big cattle call audition where you get 90 seconds to do whatever kind of talent you want to show. And I found myself in a room with our boss who casts for Billboard Music. And uh, after three and a half years and 11 different piano partners, I finally met Jason, and he's the one. Oh, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Eleven piano partners. It's true. Met. Eleven partners. Yeah, I think wow. at least. I think we've. I had tw maybe more. I stopped counting. But yeah, he is my favorite person that I worked with, and so I just waited until. Uh, the stars aligned and the timing was right for us to actually be able to go back out, which is how we ended up here, just this one voyage, this one cruise with you guys. So that's how that's how I'm here. How about you? Yeah, uh, I started playing piano about two weeks ago. <laughs> really come a long way on this cruise. You're really good. Thank you, thank you. A lot of YouTube videos. No, uh, my name is Jason Ostrowski, and first of all, I just want to. Uh, equal will sentiment they're playing with. I played probably with almost as many as Will, because uh, I've been doing Billboard since 2017. Uh, and Will and I met on the Volendam. They were gonna try putting Billboard on there, and we met really quick, about five minutes before our first show, and we had never sat across from each other and played piano, and it was just like, it was awesome. He's my favorite partner. Don't tell Michael Dushevsky that. Uh, <laughs> but no, Will is my favorite partner. But I'm from Rochester, New York, as you heard me complaining about earlier. Um, I've been playing piano since the second grade. Uh, I'm going to be 46 next month, so you can do the math on how many years that is. I took classical for eight years. I hated it. I hated being told what to play, how to play, and how to do it. And then I learned rock and roll, and I never looked back from there. Uh, but I went to school. I never sang and played piano for people until well after college. I just kind of kept it to myself. I went to school for acting for musical theater. Um, and as you've probably heard me mention, I've done one Broadway show. I did the revival of Company in 2006, and I toured with Lee Miserable for three and a half years as the dance captain. I am not a dancer. I don't know how I ended up as the dance captain. Um, I worked at Disney a few times. And it was while I was down there, I learned to do dueling pianos at a place called Pat O'Brien's at Universal Studios. Um, I moved back up to New York to do a show that never got back to Broadway, but I started doing some television work. I've done uh, 
FBI Most Wanted, I Got to Die, I Played My First Father and Died in a Fiery Car Crash. Uh, thank you, thank you, my finest work. Uh, I just did an Apple TV series, I did one, one scene with Jared uh, Leto and that dropped today, actually my episode is episode 5 and I don't think it's on until like April 8th. Um, and Bull, I was on the first season of Bull. So, I, you know, I, I've been a busy actor, but piano is where I really feel at home and I love being out at sea with y'all, making memories and vacations. And I've talked too long. Go. No, you're, you, you guys should do all the talking here. I don't really want to talk too much. Um, can you maybe explain to us a little bit what Billboard Onboard really is? Um, I'm sure most of you have heard of Billboard, but can you maybe explain a little bit about the partnership that All of America Lang? started a couple of years ago. Yeah, so so Billboard, uh, you know, is the, the charts in the in the states of how they started charting music, I think in 1957, the yeah. Billboard charts uh, officially were formed. That's why we really don't do a 50 set, because from three years of music, there is a lot of music, but there's not an entire decade to pull from. So that's why we do the 60s kind of upward. Um, and Billboard is, uh, I guess, Co not co-sponsor, but they, you know, the, this is their branded lounge and we're hired by an outside contractor to come on board and uh, work along with the Hale team and put on some uh, mediocre shows for you at Billboard. <laughs> Will and I are very low energy, as you know. Yeah. That's literally what it says to your just, contract, put on some mediocre best. shows. <laughs> no, but yeah, so what do you... <laughs> I think before the pandemic, um, there were maybe about 50 piano players, would you say? Something like that? that in, they, the, in the Billboard In rotation yeah. that they keep on retainer, and it really is just a matter of timing of who you get paired with. Um, they, they do try and take into consideration um, strengths and, and work with what they've got, but it's really mostly on what's available, what ships are coming available. And then um, also there have been some changes to the, to the billboard um, program because some, on certain ships, most ships now, the billboard piano players are also a part of the main stage production. And we did not do that this week because we have never done that. That wasn't a thing that we ever did. And so they shuffled some things around so that we could be here and change the show schedule and things so that that wasn't something we had to do. But that goes into their casting now. Usually the duos are male, female. And so it's there's not a chance that we would normally get to work together again. So that was part should have tried. Yeah, right. I, I, and that would have been hilarious. And cocktail hour. We're not used to playing cocktail piano. You know, that's pretty yeah, new. Yeah, that's a new thing. For both of us. But I enjoy it because I get to sit there and smile and y'all walk in. And, How's your evening? Like, I feel very... It's, it's nice. <laughs> in your mind, you're on the love boat somewhere, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or that TV, what was that TV show? It's a Living. Remember that TV show? They all worked in a hotel and there was like a cocktail piano. It was the 80s, Will, don't worry. Oh. <laughs> Early 80s. Anyway. Anyway, so uh, a partnership with Billboard uh, became Billboard Onboard and uh, indeed is the chart uh, basically from the, from the 50s, uh, 57 and then onwards. And, um, which basically gives us a lot of music. How many songs did you have to know or learn to before you came on board? They give you, well, I, I had the advantage of having done dueling for a couple years before, um, and they found me in Florida when they were first casting Billboard, and I got offered to be the first cast, but I also got offered that show that was supposed to go back to Broadway that didn't, and I took that instead. Um, so this came a year later, so I already had dozen songs in it? No, I have more than a dozen, but how many is the list? They give you a big list of like 60 songs? To uh, maybe I, more than that. I don't know. My boss must have been worried. He gave me like 200 songs and said, you need to make sure you're familiar with all of these. Because they're because our music really does go from it's everything. 60s. Our shows are themed and patterned after the charts themselves. So like our country show is called Hot Country because on the Billboard charts, if you look at the country charts, it's called Hot Country Top 40. So like our 60s show, there's 20 songs in there. I mean, yeah, we have 12 or 13 shows and each have at least 20 options of songs that they would recommend. And they're usually like the pretty standard, like 80s is like living on a prayer, don't stop believing. And after you do that a couple of times, you're like, well, I know some other 80s tunes. That like, like I happen to do, I do Roy Orbison's You Got It. I don't think any other Billboard player does that song, but that was a huge hit and I love Roy Orbison. And I know you guys probably love Roy Orbison. 
right? Hair bands on piano, I don't know. It doesn't work all the time for me. So, so you, as you do it, your, your list grows because you start to get deeper cuts that were also hits on the charts. I have 854 songs in my iPad it shows right now. Those are the songs that I'm ready at any moment, but nightly we're trying to pull things off that we don't, sometimes we don't have anything that we're really looking at. I think we've done, I remember on the last ship we did, someone requested the Golden Girls theme, and I don't think you pulled, you had any lyrics or anything. You just started no, I singing. Just did it. I was like, that's just sort of, that's amazing. <laughs> it's a high wire act. Those request shows are really, a, there is somebody said to us one day, you guys like communicate with your eyes, and there's so much going on between us. Like, you're thinking about entertaining and performing and doing the song well, but you're also thinking, how does this song go? What's the yeah. next line? How does the melody go? Does Will know what key I'm in? What's no. the tempo no. here? When no. should we stop? Should I make a joke? Did I eat dinner tonight? Like, it's there's a lot going on. That is true. And then, oh, someone just won $6,000. Oh, yeah. And if you're here, congratulations yeah. the other night. I was making sure it wasn't a medical situation because she sounded like she was getting beat. But, like, yeah. it did sound. Oh, oh my God. Okay. okay. Six it's, grand. That's good noises. Good noises. Okay. We're, what are we playing, Sweet Caroline? What state am I in? Where, where are we? Oh, we're in the middle of the ocean. Okay, that's what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I was actually standing right there. Oh, you were there. That happened, right. And so I hear this happening. I turn around. I think most people were there, there actually. And go, wow. I was like, oh, okay. And then I turn back and I see all these eyes at me. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Right Same. That's My how fault. I feel every night. Um, is that the biggest? <laughs> All these eyes looking at me, and I don't know what's going on. I'm just, I'm looking at him. Do you know what's going on? Yeah. Is, is, is that the biggest challenge of playing in Billboard? That is, in, in this case, on these ships, like an open venue with, in, yeah, in this case, a casino on the other side. I mean, it's lively. It's supposed to be wanted to be that way, but can yeah. it, is that challenging for you guys to indeed stay focused while you are playing a song? It depends on, for me, not so much, because I've played a lot of, like, I play in a, or when I lived in New York City, I played in a dueling bar in Hell's Kitchen on Friday and Saturday nights, and it's nothing but screaming bachelorette parties and some drunk guy on a table and somebody's trying to get on your piano and like everything's going on. And in this bar, you know, sometimes the ceiling would leak. So, there, you know, you just can't think about it. You just got to get through, don't stop believing, and you're good to go. But for some, you know, if you're not used to all that going on, it can be challenging. It, it is my first and only piano gig I've ever had, period, let alone like a dueling piano bar sort of scenario, because we do want people to drink and have a really good time. And if people want to get up and dance, we love that. If people want to sing along and be rowdy, we like that. Um, but I am not used to um, as much things happening around. I love to people watch. And I do get really distracted when the main stage parade lets out. I'm just very like, that's my favorite part of our show. Especially on gala night. I mean, everybody looks so beautiful and it's just like, it's very distracting for me. I'm very like, And then last night you had the, the BB King's Blues Club parade from here to the main stage yes. because we changed the show. It went both ways. I was like, okay, well, I thought I knew what I was seeing. <laughs> Um, so how do you select your songs? You say you have different themes that is indeed linked to the charts. Do you, uh, are those uh, set already for you or are you really allowed to add more as you go? Or is that more for the all requests? Uh, no, we own? definitely add, um, we add to our list, you know, like tonight's show. Here's a little secret. We haven't planned tonight's show, but Will and I, we know what the theme is. We're so, going to. So we're we'll, meet, to. we'll meet at dinner time. Like, oh, what do you want to sing? What do you want to sing? And it's a lot like being a, a DJ. You really have to pace the show. You know, you want a nice strong opening and then we'll talk to you a bit. And then you, you, know, you got to read the room and see if everyone wants to mellow out a bit or about some you, high energy You hit stuff. the nail on the head right there. It's one of my favorite things about working with Jason is that it's not set. We don't say we're gonna come out there and this is what we're gonna play whether they like it or not. We really are trying to pay attention to how things have gone, the whole cruise and, and your taste in music from your requests and we try and imp uh, cater it. Yeah, yeah, like introduce more of those types of songs if we have those into the shows that will fit the theme as best they can. But even mid show, I've always told Jason and we're kind of very, vice versa, if we don't feel like something's moving in the direction we want it to go, we're gonna change it. We're gonna 
do what is best for the show if we think we know. And some, some crowds are harder to read than others, but you guys are really smiley, lovely people. Oh, so hopefully, fantastic. yeah, yeah. After so. two years of not doing this, this is, we've had the best audiences we've ever had. We've been very, very lucky. Thank you. Because indeed, uh, you have not done this for a year and a half, two years because of the pandemic. Then you were called very last minute, hey, can you guys come out for one cruise due to a scheduling issue? Um, anyway, that's a long story. What, how was that? Like, what was it like for you to come back like that with no time to rehearse? You guys just came on board and then boom, that's it. Because, I, can, I, can I tell you what you told me uh, earlier in the cruise? He told me that he was so nervous the night before, he actually was crying and, and, and on the phone with his mom. And I, and, and, but I told him, like, are you serious? Because you all will agree that you, and you too, I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong, but like, just to give an idea how amazingly talented you are. He is. And, and, but for you to just to come back and as if you just pick up right where you left off, I think that's with pretty a amazing. With a partnership, that's, that's hard to do. And that's why we get along so well. Um, I, I, during the pandemic, I was still doing, like I started doing this online uh, variety show once a month, which was a lot of work. But uh, it was fun, it was fun. Lamont was actually a guest on it one. He did a nice little spot for me on that. So thank you, Lamont Ferguson, wherever you may be. Um, but uh, so I kept busy with that. And I had like a remote band and I was recording songs for the, it was an hour long show every month uh, with comedy sketches I was writing and a monologue interviews and um, and then I as things started opening up back in New York State I started doing some little private gigs here and there and I also have an Elton John tribute band called Benny and the Rest um, and we do all Garth Brooks music <laughs> yeah. uh, but so so I've been doing like shows and theaters uh, lately with that and that's a great two-hour rock and roll experience with the music of Elton so so I've been busy at the piano but I had nothing else going on you know? how, how are you, Will? What, what have you been doing during the pandemic? Yeah, I, we were on the ship. Our contract was scheduled to end on New Stottendam on March 15th, the, the day that cruise ships kind of just the world sort of ended for, for a lot of us, or at least things became so unclear on what was going to happen. So we were lucky in the fact that that was our scheduled day to go home. It didn't affect our travel or anything. Um, so I was very thankful to get home and um, didn't, didn't perform. I didn't uh, do much of anything musical, unfortunately, during the pandemic. Um, I'd spent time with family the first few months, and then I moved to LA. I thought, uh, no, I'm not going to be out and about, you know, not meeting and greeting, but I'm going to get a feel for what it's like on this side of the country. And uh, I tried to make it work there for about two months and couldn't find any work. And then I moved back home. Then I moved to Asheville, North Carolina. And I found some work there uh, for about nine months, but it wasn't performing. It was retail and management, which I have some experience in. But I lived in a house where I didn't even have a piano. So I, I auditioned for a few things via Zoom. So I may be saying three times, I think, during the two years that we were off, not even in the car for fun. So I was really scared. I was really nervous because I wanted to do a good job Your voice and not let you, you down. You didn't sing it. You still sound the way you sound. I I cannot believe Stupid. That that's, uh, yeah. I have a lot of anxiety, so um, I'm not actually quite as extroverted as I seem on microphone. And singing really brings me out of my shell. It really makes me want to be around people and uh, helps me feel more comfortable. So I didn't push myself as much as I should have during the pandemic, but it is like being thrown into the most beautiful, warm, luxurious water. <laughs> Uh, with yeah. Jason because it's a little bit of a shock to your system to go back to it and it feels strange to be back on ships But I'm so thankful. I wouldn't have done it with anyone else That's sort of the comfortability oh, that you have to have to know that you can just walk back into it because it is scary There's nowhere else on the ship that there are two pianos So we don't get to rehearse together even so we just really uh, faith and a prayer <laughs> You know, it's true so um, how how does because uh, of course now you were already known with with Bill Wood on board, but how were you guys initially hired? Like, is there an auditioning process that normally happens? Yeah, for me initially it was in twenty 
the end of 2015, when they were developing the, the Billboard show, and I was in Orlando, and the guy who hires it, a, his name is Mike Windish. It's Windish Music out of uh, Westchester, Pennsylvania. And he came down, and I heard about the audition, so I went over and I met Mike, and uh, that was it. It was like every piano player in Orlando was at that audition that day. And I actually think Katie Pinder Brown, who uh, was the first cast, uh, was out of Orlando too. She plays dueling down there at a couple of the clubs. Um, it just seemed exciting to me because I didn't like, it was a little different because like your typical dueling piano show, especially in like New York and stuff, it's like, just like filthy jokes and like, it's like, you know, trying to get money out of people. And I don't enjoy that. I enjoy doing a dueling show where we get to entertain and perform and kind of ride the line. And uh, so I, I enjoyed this much more and it just sounds so appealing to me when it was described to me what the show was going to be here on board. But yeah, it's an audition process. Yeah, same for you. I, I went to an audition that's called UPDAS. It's United Professional Theater Auditions. And so to go to those, you have to be already established somewhat in the industry. You have to have someone sign off and recommend that you go. And, and you get 90 seconds, you can sing, you can uh, do a monologue, you can uh, do, you know, whatever your talent is. And I sang and did a monologue and at the time I had been working at Dollywood and theme parks in the area and I thought this is great because instead of going to a hundred auditions you walk out on a stage and the theater the room is filled like instead of just being lovely smiling faces it's all casting directors and so it's cruise lines Disney theme parks some television just all kinds of opportunities and so you get your 90 seconds and anyone who's interested in you writes down your number that you're wearing and then later you meet up with those companies. And I was so thankful. I had nine companies interested in me that day. And one of them was a Renaissance Festival. They won every 10 seconds. That's right, every year, right? <laughs> bam, bam, I was booking them. They said, we like your long hair. You, you look like you could do, like you could sing and play instruments because I play several different musical instruments. So that was one. I got a call back from Tweetsie Railroad in North Carolina and I get to the room and they say, all right, and here's what you're gonna do. Every morning at 7 a.m. you're gonna show up for fight call. That's where you're gonna do your stunts. You're gonna practice your punches and falling off buildings and all that stuff. And I was like, oh, this is so interesting to think that I could potentially be doing this. It just didn't seem real. And then I got to a room and there was a piano in it. And I was like, okay, well, this is, I think I know where this is going. And our boss, Mike Windish, I met that day, he said, I saw on your resume that you play piano by ear, and I wasn't in the room where you auditioned, but the person there really loved your voice and said you did a funny, funny act, a monologue. Will you do that for me? And so I did it and made him laugh. And um, then he said, okay, so let's sit down at the piano. Can you play Great Balls of Fire? And I was like, I guess. And so, you know, kind of like figured it out. And he was like, okay, can you try this with this hand? And, you know, about 20 minutes later, he said, I think you might be able to do this job. I love your voice and you're a good piano player, but you need to be a, a better piano player. So if you can work on things, there's a ship that's leaving in two weeks called the Conning's Dam. And it's about how it works. It's the flagship. And so you're going to be on our newest best ship at the time. So you really have to be on your game. And I had never really, I'd never been out of Pigeon Forge, honestly. <laughs> I had been on a school field trip to New York and, and family vacations to Florida. That was it. And so he, I said, okay, cool. Where's the boat going? And he said, well, you're going to leave Fort Lauderdale. You're going to go, you're going to sail for a week and a half in the Caribbean. And then you're going to cross the ocean to Portugal, Spain, Italy, France, Greece. You're gonna do all of the Baltic. And then before you leave, you go up to Northern Europe and you're gonna do Norway. You're gonna, I hit like 31 countries in my very first contract. It was incredible. I, I'm so thankful I said yes. I just kept saying, sure, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. And the next thing I knew I was on a, a ship and things were moving and the piano was there. And I was like, I guess this is my life now. So I am so, so very thankful that I just kept saying yes. That's, what an amazing that's story. We that's amazing. So you said you, you used to play piano by ear. Yes. So you, you did not have any education in, in music or? He's from Pigeon Forge, come on. Pigeon Forge, yeah. <laughs> I can barely speak English. Yeah. You speak better English than I do, Carl. What do you want? She really does. 
Um, my, my mother was a church pianist, and my dad is like, what most people would call a music minister, but in Pigeon Forge, he's the choir director. So in a Southern Baptist church, that's what it is. And so I grew up in a musical family, and they saw that that was something I had a lot of interest in. But when I was about five and my mom tried to put me in lessons, I, my ear was already stronger than my patience as a five-year-old to learn how to read the notes. And so I just, I did spend a lot of free time as a child just playing piano for fun. And that's all I ever did was just sit down and play along to the radio or I would play things that I heard in movies that I liked and songs and just sit down and try to figure out how it went. So by the time I got to Billboard, I was very familiar with figuring things out on the fly. So that, that helped, not having much to do except tend to the goats in Pigeon Forge, for real. <laughs> you, took, you took lessons and things. Yeah, what, what did you do? I did, I didn't have, uh, in second grade, uh, Miss D, my music teacher, would let people get up before class and share a talent, and nobody in my family had any musical. There was nothing musical in my family. And uh, this kid, Stephen Paraka, got up and played the piano, and we all clapped afterwards, and something in me went whoop. And I went home, and I said to my parents, I want piano lessons, a little second grader. And they're like, really? And I said, yeah. And they bought me, they bought a spinet piano, and they got me lessons. And like I said, I hated classical music for eight years. I would cry to get out of it. I don't want to perform. And they would let me out of the recitals and competitions. Um, and then I just, like, I quit for a year and took rock and roll and learned to fake, where you know you just play by the, the chord symbols so you know your basic theory. And, uh, but I didn't know I had an ear. My ear's not as good as Will's, but I was quickly had to discover that because on my Pat O'Brien's audition, they sat me across from a regular player and they said, you play one of your songs and then he's gonna play this song and then he's gonna start a song, but he's not gonna tell you what key it's in or what song it is and you start playing along with him. Luckily for me, he played Honky Cat, which, you know, I love my Elton John, but he played it in a different key. So I had a little secret advantage. I was like, okay, I know the song. Now we just figure out what key we're in, which becomes easier to do as you do this job, you know? Yeah, because you guys have uh, your tablets. Uh, there's no sheet music on there, just the chords, sort of to give you a, a guideline of what it should sound like or what key to play it in. But other than that, you need to know all those songs, right? Yeah, it doesn't give you the melody or anything. No, it just gives exactly. you the chords. So no, I mean, even with the chords, sometimes you're like, I don't know what this melody is supposed to be like. Sometimes he doesn't use anything. You sing American Pie. There's a lot of songs that are just from memory. This point. All those verses, and you're not looking at anything. That's where, even if I know a song and I've sang it, a lot of these songs I've sang 200 times, I will always, every single time, pull up the lyrics, because if I don't, that woman will win $6,000 again. <laughs> or we've been on ships where, do you remember we were on a ship and the people walked by in the inflatable T-Rex costumes? Yes! That was, was like, a charter cruise, that was get wild. What is happening? I thought something was in the water, you guys. It was like, I don't know. And so that's where the Golden Girls were. Those guys were dressed as B. Arthur and uh, two men. And Bob. Like a seven foot four B. Arthur, which yeah, is probably that's accurate. why we did Golden Girls. <laughs> and yeah, and he's just launched right into it. I mean, you never know what's gonna happen. So I like to have my outline right there. Just it's mostly lyrics. It's impossible to remember all the lyrics for the to the songs that we do. But so yeah, I like a little safety net there. I think we all understand that with such a large repertoire, and then of course you have the all request shows. But you really never know what you get. So. Uh, and I know that you guys always want to play, okay, maybe you haven't seen it before, or you want to try to learn it and then, you know, uh, make sure that you still play it before you end the cruise. Uh, that's amazing. Um, so what's up next for you guys? Because um, you're only here for this voyage, and I'm so thankful that I got to work with you I again. I too. I wasn't even supposed to be here anymore. I so know. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> what's up next? Are you, are you guys, do you have a next contract lined up, or what's gonna no, happen? No, this, uh, for me, this is kind of like, I didn't expect to be doing uh, this. So this was my first ship ever in 2017, and uh, much like Tom Brady, I thought I had retired, and. Now I'm back on the Euro Dam, but I think this is really going to be it. Um, I've got my, my, my show that I'm hoping to, to get on ship stages that I do in, uh, not my Elton stuff, I have an, another uh, kind of show I do in theaters and stuff, and I just had a successful production of it in New York City in December. Um, but until then, I go home for six days, and then I go, I'm a resident entertainer on a riverboat on the Mississippi River. 
for two weeks at a time throughout the summer. So that'd be nice, like back and forth from New Orleans. Does it feel weird to be on the river yes. ship after being on an ocean ship? Yeah, it's not as big. Uh, it's, uh, and it's just different. It's really dark on the Mississippi River at night too. It's a little scary. Like the first time I went out on my balcony and I was like, ooh, it's dark out here. And there's gators. So, <laughs> but it's nice. It, it, it's really nice. I, I'm doing the lower Mississippi and then from September to like mid-October, I'll be in the upper Mississippi, um, nice. which would be beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. And how about you, Will? What is up next for you? Um, well, I, as I was saying earlier, I had no real foreseeable plans of going back into entertainment and I was just so miserable in my management job in North Carolina that I quit without a plan. Uh, on the the uh, 18th of January was my last day there because my birthday was the 26th and I said, you know what, I'm not working here on my birthday, I can't do this. So I quit without a plan and then two days later after I quit, I saw that Dollywood was having auditions and that was my very first place that I ever performed. And it's, it's a really amazing company to work for. Before I auditioned, or since I've auditioned, I didn't even know this, uh, Dolly has decided that she's going to pay tuition and books, total, total cost for any, any of her employees at her entire theme park, which is several, several thousand, probably 30,000 employees. Anyone who wants to go back to school, she's gonna help further their education. So I'm so excited about that. I might go back to school again, I don't know, but uh, I was very lucky to get the call. I'll be going back to Dollywood and performing. I was trying to muster the courage to do that when I got the call for this, and I thought, well, that's gonna really put me back in the showbiz mindset. So I'm thankful I, I am here because now I feel like if we can do this, we're, you know, Dollywood's gonna be easy. So Amazing. I don't have to play for myself there. I'll just be throwing on a cowboy hat and acting a fool. So if anybody's in, in the Pigeon Forge vicinity, please come on over and say hi. I'll be there till October 16th and then probably for Christmas as well. I'm waiting on a contract. So Amazing. we'll see. Unless Holland calls first and they tell me Jason's ready to go, then I'll be spending Christmas at sea. Hopefully. So we'll Jason, see. come on. <laughs> well, I think uh, we are almost extremely thankful that you guys happen to be here together and you just picked it up where you left it off and, and it's been amazing so far um, I think I can speak on behalf of all of us we're extremely thankful for that um, I think with that it's time to open up for some questions from the guests um, if you have a question please raise your hand I will repeat it on the microphone and then we'll get it to the, to the gents go ahead sir <laughs> Do your ears get tired? You Oddly enough, your... a little bit. Yeah, they they close up and yeah, we play by we play by ear quite a bit and our thing, brains get tired. That's the hardest thing is is trying to learn the new songs. There's no real shortcut to that because if I could read music well enough to just put it up in front of me, there would still be a bunch of hurdles to getting it pulled up on the iPad. The internet isn't always as you know as quick as I'd like to play your request. Um, but yeah, so when you're learning a song, for me, I have to listen to a song at least 10, 15 times before it's even remotely familiar. And then the melody is starting to stick. I usually have to leave it alone, listen to some other music, come back to it again. So when I play a new song, I've listened to it 40, 50 times. It may not sound like I really know how it goes, but that's just trying to get, get it on its feet, you know? So yeah, your ears do get a little bit tired uh, <laughs> trying to learn new things so quickly. All right, do we have any more questions? Go ahead, ma'am. So, how old are you? I, how old are you? Uh, are you fixing me up? <laughs> <laughs> I did say earlier in the cruise I'm very, very single, so I did ask, I did ask for it. Um, I'm 36. I turned 36 this year. Oh, thank you. You're my new favorite. What's your secret? Dolly. Dolly. It's Dolly. It's living near those, the, you know, magical Tennessee mountain air and... Okay. Even in Asheville, you're just on the other side of the mountain, so I, I, I do think there is something about it there. It's a really beautiful place. If you haven't had a chance to visit the Great Smoky Mountain National Park, it's incredible. Dollywood, her theme park, is right there at the foothills of the mountain, so it's, it's a really beautiful place. I wish I had Dolly's money and her secret, but I don't know. <laughs> so, never know. All right, everybody. Yeah, go ahead, sir. 
did I, did I sing it and do that? <laughs> the funny thing is I don't really know how to explain it. It's just sort of like, because I've also acted as well. I, I, um, one of the most unique jobs I ever had was I worked at a murder mystery dinner show in Pigeon Forge. And my paychecks, when I would go to the bank and cash them, it said murder LLC, which was so fun <laughs> to look at the teller like, but, um, you know, doing character work and acting, you do have to try different voices and you try different things that worked. And in the murder mystery show, there was one show I played six different characters within a two hour show because I kept dying and I had to be new people, you know, to keep the show going. So, so I, I don't know where it is and how it fits. The same thing with Kermit. It's just in there somewhere. And it just, it kind of feels like crumpling up a piece of paper. I take my, in here I'm just doing something like, it feels like it's mashing things. It's not very good for you to sing like that. I always take a bet in my head when you start that. I'm like, how long is it going to get yeah. today? <laughs> I like to do it because it's funny. It gets a nice reaction. It makes people smile. But yeah, you really can't sing like that for more than a couple lines. And then you just feel like you're gargling glass. So. Oh. Or Prince, yeah. I did that for the for uh, someone else who was on board, and yeah, I started that, and I forgot I didn't warm up all the way to. But you had those tight range. pants on. You were yeah, good. the tight pants help. It's a big difference. I needed my Bee Gees pants for wow. that night. So. <laughs> I see another hand over there. Go ahead, man. Yes, um, you mentioned that you were in Les Mis, and we were curious about that. I was on the, uh, the, I was in Les Mis, the question was, you said you were in Les Mis, yes, I was in Les Mis. I was on the 25th anniversary tour, which launched in 2010, wow, um, and I did that for three and a half years. I was the dance captain, and uh, so my responsibilities as dance captain was to know all 34 roles in the show, the children, the women, the lead, everybody and teach that to anybody new coming into the show. Um, and then I was also what's called a swing. I was one of three male swings and we each covered four male tracks in the show, meaning if one of the guys, you know, I'd be sitting in my dressing room watching Netflix and somebody would run in and be like, you know, Ian's hurt, you're on. And you throw your costume on and you just kind of mosey out on stage and the rest of the cast is like, what the heck? Because you know, they have no idea somebody's been hurt. Uh, so it's like being a quarterback going in for the, you know, second string going in for the game. Uh, but I spent a long time doing that, and uh, that actually went back to Broadway, but they got rid of all of us that had been on the road and hired younger, just out of college people. And, but that's what led me to, to dueling pianos, because I was like, well, I'm done with New York City now. I was kind of frustrated. So I went down to Florida, and now I'm here with Will and Caroline. We had been working together for about two months when it clicked that I saw Les Mis on the tour when it came to the Tennessee Theater. And I said, you, oh, yeah. you were at the Tennessee Theater? This is crazy. I was sitting in the audience that night. So I met, I didn't meet Jason, but I saw Jason perform several, several years before we met, which is and I got amazing. To, I got to do the show just real quick, in person though, up in Toronto for six months. And the original Jean Valjean, a guy named Colm Wilkinson, whose voice is like an angel. I mean, it's just, ugh. But he came and did a performance of the show, not as Valjean, because he was a little older now, so he played the bishop. But I got to teach him the show, and I was like, oh, I'm teaching my childhood vocal idol how to be in the show that he was the master of and won the Tony Award for. Like, it was like crazy to me, and I got to hang out with him and just like, it was awesome. Anyway, I'm sorry. That's amazing. <laughs> it no, was an amazing we love experience those doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Keep the stories coming, absolutely. Uh, do we have any more questions? I've never played at Marie's Crisis in New York. I've played at Brandy's up on what, East 84th Street, but the place I've played more regularly than anywhere is Bar 9 and Hell's Kitchen, which is still great. Like if I'm in the city and I wander in there on a weekend, they, I, they say, hey, you want to get up and play when the show's going on? I'm usually like, no, 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 but a couple of gins in. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Let's do this, and I end up working for the night. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Maurice Crisis is a lot of fun, though. Jimmy Fallon shows up there a lot. Uh, I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions, so let me know if there's anything else. Well, I think we have answered. Oh, we have a question over there. Go ahead, sir. So for both of you, how many instruments do each of you play? How many instruments do each of you play? I play piano. Um, a little self-taught on acoustic guitar. Bass I had to learn to play. Um, when I did Company on Broadway, we all played our own instruments. 
and they hired me as a, a standby, another job where I got to sit there until the other guy couldn't do the show. Um, and they hired me as a piano player and they said, I signed a contract and they said, you play uh, bass too, right? And I was like, no, and it wasn't just bass, it was like stand up bass with no frets, which is very difficult to learn. And they said, oh, you're gonna have to take lessons and learn. So they got me lessons and I learned how to play that for the show and act and carry it around a Broadway stage. Um, and I also played saxophone very poorly in high school. Uh, alto sax and then Barry sax, which is just, you know, boring. <laughs> it was boring. And I never practiced. Had I practiced saxophone, I probably would have been competent at least. But that's it for, oh, and tambourine. Does that count? <laughs> Kazoo. Oh, and the harmonica. I do play piano man. man. That's about it. That's right. The zoo, you could probably the zoo, the, zoo. the spoons. <laughs> Keep going, Will. The juice harp. <laughs> yeah, all of it. Um, I, I, the instruments I've played best, I, I probably would say guitar first. I took guitar lessons for many years and played like rhythm guitar in church for probably a decade, uh, and then piano, and then in high school I played trombone. Uh, but I love I love every instrument that I can get my hands on. I also play harp. I just always wanted a harp, and so after my first contract, I said I got that billboard money now. I'm buying a harp, so I, I bought a harp, and I can play it. So, but if you give yourself enough time, and you live in Tennessee, and there's nothing else to do, you can teach yourself to do anything. <laughs> so I I love playing instruments, but I haven't had a chance to play harp in a show yet. But that's I'm trying to get that on the main stage with the wires, and I'm going to fly in and Dueling all that. Dueling harps. I think we've got a new one. Oh, yeah, that's great. Show. If I don't have anxiety now, that's going to be fantastic. So. <laughs> I can see it. Dueling harps. What do you think? Dueling, Dueling harps. harps. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, the quest hour, everything, Perfect. the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we have time for one more question, and then we're going to have to wrap it up. You said something about you knew Stephen Sondheim. I got to know, you know the, I the mentioned that I knew Stephen Sondheim, who just passed away over Thanksgiving. And for those of you who don't know who Steve was, he wrote the lyrics for West Side Story and Gypsy, and he wrote a little night music and Sweeney Todd and Into the Woods. and. Um, Send in the Clowns was his biggest radio hit, I think. But I got to know Steve very well doing company because he had written that show. And he was kind of a, because he was such a genius, everybody uh, the, you know, always wanted a piece of him. And he was kind of a shy guy, but I just approached him like a normal dude. And um, I hung out with him a lot, a lot of dinners and a lot of drinks. And like, uh, he was just, he was remarkable to know. And it hit me pretty hard when, when he passed away uh, after Thanksgiving. He was 91, I mean, he had, a, an amazing life, but I got to stand in his house, in his music study, near the piano that he bought with the money from West Side Story, and we just talked about writing music one night, and it was just like, this is Stephen, this is like William Shakespeare talking to me about writing plays. You know? I think, weren't were we on the new Stunt and Dom, and you got a call to be a part of celebrating his life before he passed, because they were, they were going to do like a concert? There was something Yeah, that... there was a concert I couldn't do because we were on that, but I had done, if you go on... <laughs> I think it's on Netflix, his 80th birthday celebration at, uh, at Lincoln Center. I'm just in the big, they, we, we surprised them all, the past cast from his show and sang one of his favorite songs, which is called uh, Sunday in the Park with George. And uh, you, you'll you see me center state. We were told there'll be no close-ups, don't worry everybody. And there was this one guy that was like, you're a redhead, I'm standing near you. You'll be easy to find on camera. And I was like, okay. And uh, sure enough, what the heck was that? Uh, sure enough, too heavy for the chair. It just cracked. <laughs> Not my glucose tablets. Um, but yeah, so if you watch that, they definitely zoom in, and there I am on Netflix singing some Stephen Sondheim. So. Amazing. Well, I, I want to thank you both for, first of all, a moment of your time here, for sharing all those wonderful stories with us. Um, if it were for me, we would stay here another hour, but uh, we're going to have I got to go play cocktail piano, lady. Yeah. <laughs> Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Yeah, there you go. Um, thank you so much for, for being here, for being here to cruise, um, and um, yeah, for, for being who you are. You are, are both wonderful performers, so talented, and it's just been such a pleasure to have you on board. Can I please get a big round of applause? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
o'clock, and then 7.45 is our icon show, and then 9.45, you can slam us with all those songs you want right. to hear that so we don't know. Make sure to go see them in Billboard on board. We would love to see you all there. Thank you all so much for joining. Enjoy the rest of this afternoon on board. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. 